<clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Still letting everybody know that we're live. A very good morning to you. <clears throat> My voice is doing funny things. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, my name is Rorisang Tandikizo. Um, I'm part of a family called Jesus This, Jesus That. We are a large group <laughs> now. Um, I think Jesus has started this, started with just me and my baby brother. And now uh, it's thousands of us who gather weekly. For Bible study and for prayer. One of the things that God has charged us with is uh, to move across in and around our land, South Africa and beyond, we believe, and, and you know, the months and years to come. Um, just speaking Jesus, <laughs> looking at the word, um, growing together, uh, just a family, a great network. Our mission is to is to present Jesus Christ undiluted, is to speak the word as it is, is to challenge ourselves to, to be participants of the kingdom of God, and not just people who come to receive from God, but people who come to receive and go out and work for God. And we believe that we are the workhorses. <laughs> I heard somebody say that recently, the workhorses of the kingdom of God. We believe that God has called us for such a time as this. And uh, we gather here <clears throat> in the mornings on Friday, today's Friday, Friday at 5 a.m. And uh, we simply just pray and connect together. So thank you so much for taking the time out. Um, um, congratulations on making it at 5 a.m. in the morning. Um, God is good. I believe he's gonna be faithful and good to us even in this time, in Jesus' name. Uh, you can see the veterans are in the building because all you're seeing is good morning, good morning, good morning. If you're new here, welcome to Jesus, this Jesus at prayer. Um, uh, we always encourage that when you do come to prayer, just go over uh, what we were looking at um, the previous evening. It's usually where we start and take our foundation in terms of getting into prayer. What happens at prayer? We read the word of God. We use the word of God as our vocabulary. It's uh, what we use to speak, right? And, and we're going to do a lot of that. Uh, so this live is not like many lives. Um, we're here to pray. That's why we're here. We're here to be very intentional um, about this hour that we have with God. So please do. Um, uh, get as comfortable as you can. Take whatever position that you can. You're not here to watch me. You're here to pray. Uh, you're here to participate. Um, and I believe that God will be faithful to us. We say good morning because God is good. The Bible tells us his mercies are new every single morning. And that's the mercy that we stand on. It's five o'clock in the morning. Other people are still rolling in bed. Um, other people are, are far away. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what time it is. Um, I see there's people from all over uh, logging in. Uh, but, but we are in intentional about this time right so um uh, good morning um and uh, let's go about and pick a name so we do this every single friday morning any name that you see any name that you see that comes up on your screen you can tag the person you don't have to tag them it's not a tagging exercise per se but it's a, i'm standing in agreement and in faith with you what are we doing we're praying the word of god over their lives so pick someone quickly scroll up and down find a name and uh, we're going to speak a good word over that person this morning is that okay um, um I see some of you guys are only coming in. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I pick a friend this morning that you're standing in faith with. Pick a friend that you're standing uh, with faith in. Uh, we're speaking God's word, God's goodness, God's mercy, God's protection over them. Um, how about you pray for the things you pray for yourself over them? That Lord God, may they have good health. Uh, speak a good word over their family. Uh, speak a good word over their careers. Uh, we're just faithful to God. Um, um, I got to pick a name. <laughs> I think it's A B underscore Sitandwa. A B underscore Sitandwa. I'm gonna be praying with you. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, here we are this morning. For the opportunity for us to, to wake up bright and early and to seek your face. What a privilege it is to know that before we even do anything else, Lord God, this is where we can start our day. Where greater place can we begin but here? But you this morning, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for this time that we're going to have. Lord God, as true Jesus, this Jesus, that family 
Lord God, we're picking names this morning. I'd like to pray for AB uh, this morning. Go on, pick a name, pick somebody that you're praying over. And Father, I just want to speak a good word over AB this morning. You pray, your protection over them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, Christ. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that it is well with her. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I speak over her career. I speak over her family life. I speak over her body. The things that her heart cries for. Lord God, you said you're the God who knows our innermost thoughts, our innermost cries. Even while we are still speaking, you're a God who answers. And this morning, Lord God, we stand upon that word. The word that says you are Abba. You are a father who cares and loves and protects and surrounds us with your mercy. I speak your mercy over her life. But you I declare salvation that only not only her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, but her and her household will come to know you as God and King in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But we lift up your name this morning. We glorify you. We exalt you. Lord God, anything that has made her feel unworthy, anything that has made her feel far and distance away from you, Father God, we nullify that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I give her an utterance this morning, Holy Spirit, that she may speak and call upon you at any given time, that she may know that you are God who is there for her, that she may know that you are God who surrounds her. Come, don't get weary, pray. Pray, pray. Speak a good word over them. Lord God, that your goodness and your mercy will follow them all the days of their lives, that they will live long and not die. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we cancel premature death. We cancel any sickness that's trying to brew. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we speak your goodness over them. Come on, don't get tired. Thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity that you give us. That God, you said in your word that we're young commanders. We're those who stand in the gap. Lord God, this morning we stand in that office saying, Lord God, not on our watch, not while we're here not while we have the word of God in our mouths not when we know the promises of God are yes and amen not when we know that we've been given the name above all other names the name of Jesus not when we know that your word is alive and is rema and it moves and that it is sharper than any two-edged sword not when we are aware Lord God that there is freedom and true liberty in you this morning Lord God we speak that upon our fellow friends in the mighty name of Jesus Christ thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your saving power. Thank you for your mercy. Woo! Thank you for your mercy that fetches us in the trenches that we find ourselves in. Thank you for your mercy that fetches us, Lord God, in the sin that we find ourselves in. Thank you, Lord God, that even though we're undeserving, you pour out your love on us. Thank you. I speak that blessing over AB this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We come against any demonic force, any powers and principalities. Father, you said that they are under our feet. And today we stand boldly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in all authority, understanding that there's no power, no force, uh, nothing, Lord God, that can separate us from your grace, separate us from your love, separate us from your protection in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the devil is trying to brew over their lives, we cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. A good word over them this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Yesterday, we were looking at a... It's such a beautiful part of scripture. A part of scripture that reminds us that God comes for us, that reminds us that God loves us, that reminds us that God can use anyone, that reminds us that we're not canceled out, sorry, that we're not ruled out, that, 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 that we're not too far for God to save and not only to save and rescue and, and reconcile with and have intimacy and fellowship with, but we're also not too far for God to take us in and, and send us out. Take us in and send us out. We were, we were reading 
uh, from First Timothy yesterday. If you have not yet watched it, please go back to the previous post and just take a bit of time just to look at the word that we're looking at. And, and that's going to be the foundation of our first prayer point this morning. Before I move into that, why do we do this as Jesus, this Jesus, that it's important that we always, I know, and if you're here and you're part of Jesus, this family, I hope that uh, you, know, you grant us grace, that you allow us to keep saying this, that we've got to teach the culture of prayer. We've got to teach the culture of praying for others. We, we've got to teach the culture of using the word of God as our vocabulary to send forth the word of God into other people's lives. One of the challenges we had not so long ago was to pick up your phone and call someone and pray for them. And, 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 and the first thing you're like, what am I going to say? That's, I'm going to randomly call you and be like, oh, can I pray for you? Uh, and, and we learned not so long ago that this word is our vocab. So this is who we are. This is what we do. I hope I'm making sense this morning. This is who we are. This is what we do. If you're sitting in a taxi, if you're sitting in a train, if you're sitting in an airplane, if you're standing in line at the shop at the till to pay, if you get out your car, if you're sitting at the restaurant and your waiter's interacting with you, we are sensitive to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying and we follow through by action. And sometimes that action will require us to step outside of our comfort zone. And to be used by God and stand in the gap with the word of God in agreement with God for somebody else. It is what we do. It's who we are. They ask us, what do we do? We pray. <laughs> what do we do? We read the word of God. What do we do? We trust and believe. What do we do? We trust and obey. It's what we do. It's who we are. So we don't just do it on this platform. We want to encourage you that this become what we do in our daily lives every day. Second nature. And sometimes you're sitting on, 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 on TikTok or you're sitting on, on, on Facebook or you're sitting on whatever platform, X, Twitter, I don't know, uh, Instagram, and, and, and somebody's page comes up. Instead of going, ooh, they've lost so much weight. Ooh, this, you can just speak a word over them. And just like, oh, Father, thank you. I got to see Zban's Bunny's picture. Actually, while I'm here, Lord, I just speak a good word over them. I, I speak God's protection. I see, Lord God, that you're elevating them and they work. I pray that you continue to surround them, that you cover them, that, Father, the God, that you bless the work of their hands. It's our lifestyle. It's who we are. We take any opportunity to partner up with the Holy Spirit and to be used by God. Amen. First Timothy. We, we, we looked at First Timothy yesterday from, from about verses 1 to, to about verses 17 is where we ended off. And I'm excited about where we're starting off this morning. Woo, I'm very excited. And, and if you're looking for notes and you, you want to have a place to go back to, uh, you can write down uh, 1 Timothy um, uh, chapter 1. We're looking at verse 17. Verse 17 excites me. I'm even taking the volume up because <clears throat> I want to use my TV voice for this one. <laughs> This is our first prayer point. Are we ready? Can you guys hear me nice and clear? Our first prayer point is coming from 1 Timothy 1.17. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. Pause. This is after a Paul. Uh, 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 you know, has an introspection that he then shares with, with Timothy. Timothy, a young servant of God, a young pastor, somebody who's on fire for God and is young. And, and Paul is sharing with him. And, and Paul just has a moment of introspection to remember himself. Ooh, it's sometimes good to remember yourself. Remember where God has taken you from. And, and Paul says, listen, I, 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 I committed so many things that were wrong before God. I was wicked. I, I, I persecuted the ones he loved. I, I was blasphemous. I, I did the opposite. But, but God found me. 
and, and not only did he find me and bring me into this place of intimacy with him, he, he, he then, he, the Bible says, or Paul says as he iterates to, to Timothy that, that, that he, he, he considered me trustworthy enough. See, God, God fetches you where you are and sends Jesus Christ to die on the cross for, for you and I, sinners. Woo Hope you're hearing me this morning. I'll apologize to my neighbor a little bit later on. He, he fetches us and, and sends Christ as a catalyst to, to get to us, to save us. But watch this, God does not only just save us and, and brings us into this place of reconciliation with him where we have complete access to him, where, where we, can, we can come to the Father as we are, where there's no longer a barrier between us and him. Sin is no longer a hindrance. Jesus brings us closer, but it's not just for the closeness, but once he is close with us, once we have marinated in this love, once we, we, we have handed over our lives, died to self, to resurrect with Christ. Once we are clear on what the mandate is. Once a pure heart and a clear conscience and, and genuine faith is our mission. Paul says, then God considers me trustworthy. You know, it's a privilege to be considered by God. Paul says, he considers me trustworthy and he appoints me to work for him. That's just the backdrop. Here's our prayer point. Verse 70, oh, oh, oh yeah, verse 70. So th th that's the backdrop. This is, this is after Paul, you know, goes through and, you know, tells Paul that, you know, I've got to, I've got to put it in context to you so that when I say, in verse 17, all honor, all glory to God forever and ever. He is an eternal king. We're already praying. An unseen one who never dies. I'm, remembered, I'm reminded of the Psalms that he never sleeps nor slumbers. He never dies. 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 He alone is God. God. I'll read it again. All glory and honor to God forever and ever. He is an eternal king. The unseen one who never ever sleeps or dies. Other translation says sleeps. Other translation says dies. I love this one. Who never dies. He alone is God. I don't know about you but that excites me this morning. Because the devil will, will, will let you think because you've done some stuff in life. And because you've strayed away from God at some point or another. It could be you right now. That, that, that you, 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 you are far away. And Paul says, listen, I'm the worst of the worst. But he still uses me. But I love that he goes all honor. It's not because of my good acts, no. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. It's not because I look and sound better than others. All honor and glory belongs to God forever and ever. It's not because I, I, I spend a lot more time in the Bible than others. No, no, no. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. It's not because of the background I come from. No, no. All glory belongs to God forever and ever. He's the one that is unseen. Woo. Yet he is so close and tangible. He, he's the one that never dies, never sleeps, nor slumbers. This morning our prayer point is very simple. It's to remind our spirit man and the devil that the God we serve has, <laughs> deserves all the glory and all honor. That he is God forever and ever. That he is an eternal king. The, the, the devil, unfortunately, uh, uh, your, 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 your sting is but a temporary one. This God we serve and cry out to, this God that we lean and stand on, the Bible tells us that he is an eternal king, meaning he doesn't have a term. He is outside of time. Time subjects itself to him. The Bible tells us he is the Alpha and the Omega. He, he is not controlled or limited. You see, kings are there for a specific amount of time. The Bible tells us he's an eternal king. 
So what's our prayer point this morning is to give God all the glory. To give him all the praise. Tell God that he's an eternal king this morning. Tell him that all the glory belongs to him. Ooh, if I was you, I'd be on my feet. I can't because of the screen. And tell God that he is all righteous, all knowing, all power, everlasting. Exalt him this morning. We're going to use five minutes just to blast off. If you're going to wake up your spouse or the kids early, ask for forgiveness a little bit later. But he is the only wise God. Forever and ever he stands. He's, he's unseen, but he's all-knowing and all-present. Never dies. The self-sufficient one. He's God all by himself. Let's pray this morning. We say all honor, all glory to God forever and ever, forever and ever. Thank you that you are an eternal God. Thank you, Lord God, that your term is forever. Thank you that you are outside of time that you are not limited by the things that limit us, that we, we run to the one who is not limited by anything. The Bible this morning, Lord God, in verse 17, tells us that you are king forevermore. It tells us that you are God by yourself. This morning, we just want to exalt you. I want to encourage you. You're not here to watch me. You're here to exalt him just for, for two minutes. You can even put the phone or the laptop aside. Use your own voice. You don't need to be encouraged. This is your God. You're calling him all great. You're exalting him. Use your language this morning. Whatever language is comfortable for you to utter. And say, God, there's none like you. Give we exalt you. We call you great and holy. We say you are glorified. Lord God, we thank you. Shanti Kemayakaba. Lemrehemu Hoso Tokuba. La Kasieterere de Kakabasata. Mende Mohondo Robohoko Sotokumakaba. La Rakasata Rarabo Hokubo. Maye Seterere de Rebo. Maracasata Rarabo Hoso Toki. In the mighty name of Jesus, all oh glory, all oh honor, we exalt you this morning. All glory belongs to you. Lord God, you're the God that fetches us in our mess. We're undeserving of the grace that you bestow us with. Ooh, you fetch us where we are wretched and bring us into this place and clothe us with righteousness. Who are we that you are mindful of us? Ooh, oh, glorious one. Oh, powerful one. Oh, eternal one. Oh, self-sufficient one. Oh, incomparable one. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, all oh, powerful and eternal King. The wise one. Woo. The merciful one. Lord Paul calls you generous. Woo. He says you're patient with us. You're kind and merciful. And this, and this morning, Abba Father, we just come to give you all the praise. We remind our spirit man of the God we serve. We speak to our circumstances this morning. We don't even have to call them out by name. All we need to do is say, do you know the God we serve? Yeah, yeah, maybe I haven't told you sickness in a while. That he is all glorious, all power, all honor belongs to him. He's an eternal God. Maybe, maybe marriage, I haven't spoken to you in a while to tell you he's an eternal king. Yeah, yeah, maybe financial situation. I haven't told you in a while that he never sleeps, no slumbers, or dies. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe the troubles I'm facing within my family, I haven't told you in a while that he is God by himself. 
We exalt you this morning. Shaneke maha kasa kakaya. Lehe maha ndihe kasiri reba yaka. Mako soto kuba. We're here to pray. We're not here to watch me. Pray. Yaka mende de 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 we exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. Ooh, I want to read it one more time. We exalt you. All honor and glory to the God forever and ever. He is an eternal king. Ooh. He is the unseen one. The one who never ever dies. He alone is God. He alone is God. Lord God, even if we just stay here, woo, He alone is God. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to write them down and we're going to look them in a little bit so that we're not distracted. I want you to write down Mark 4, 21. Mark 4, 21. I also want you to write down John 10, 10. I also want you to write down Matthew 5. We're looking at verses 14 and we'll see how far it takes us. It's Mark 4, 21, team, if you could just put it up in there um, and you can just keep writing it if anybody who's asking. That's our prayer points. We're going to get into it. Mark 4, 21, Mark 4, 21. I need you to put in brackets somewhere there next to your notes, John 10, 10. And then I also need you to under that write Matthew 5, 14. So, so in John 10, 10, The word of God tells us the devil's job description. That his job and his, his, his mandate and his task and what he, he, he wakes up to do. Does for a living. While he still has time because his time is limited. The Bible tells us that he, the devil comes to to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I want you to have that in the back of your mind. The devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Then I want you to look at Mark 4, verses 21. Then Jesus asked them, Would anyone light a lamb and put and then put it under a basket or under a bed. Let me read it again. Bring it closer. Jesus then asked them, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under the bed? Of course not. Listen. A lamp 
is placed on a stand. A lamp is placed on a stand. Keep it in the back of your mind. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine. A lamp is put on a stand where its light will shine. Jesus says, does anyone switch on the lamp and then hide it and put it under the bed or, or put it under a basket? He says, of course not, because that that defeats the purpose of why you, you are lighting the lamp. And then the B part of verse 21 says, a lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine. Quickly jump to Matthew. Quickly jump to Matthew. Okay, I think I wrote it down here. I liked this translation better. Quickly jump to Matthew on Matthew 14. It's the part of the Bible where it speaks about the light and the salt. Verse 14. You are the light of the world, speaking to us. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl or a basket. Instead, that's our key word today. Instead, it's giving us direction of where we're going. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everybody in the house. Then it continues. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. We will know them by their fruits. Mahakabaya. And glorify your Father in heaven. Recently, I took a trip with my mom. And uh, we got on a taxi. It was exciting. Some of you guys saw it on the social media places. And neither of us were driving. So we were very conscious of the space and what we're seeing as we're going. And we hadn't taken this trip to Lesotho in a while as, as passengers. What I'm trying to explain is before we even got to the town, me and her were playing guessing games. It was dark to figure out which town that is. See, because there's a period where we're in the car and it's dark outside and we cannot see anything. There's complete darkness. I don't know whether there's a river there or it's trees or there's wild animals because it's just dark. Whatever that area or that land has to offer, we are oblivious to because darkness has covered it. But if you're driving, oof, and I know it's not everybody that takes long distance or comes from deep blessing like some of us, there's a joy. When you've been driving for a while in the darkness and then in the light and in the distance you begin to see a light. Sometimes that city is not even on a real hill. It's the attraction of the light that you see from a distance where you go, oh, we're getting closer to our destination. See, when we're in the darkness, our destination seems very far-fetched. In fact, we don't have the collaboration. We, 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 we're unaware of where we are. But it's when the light of the next town hits our eyes that we are clear that we are still moving forward. What am I saying this morning is our charge. The Bible says that we are like the lamp. So, so, so there are many of us. The land is vast, but the laborers are few. And, and let's assume that the laborers have all stepped out at 5 a.m. and it's still dark outside. Put the lamp on the stand. That's the prayer point. Father, we're putting the light on the stand. I want to present to you that the stand is the word of God. I want to 
present to you that the stand is a prayerful life with God. I want to present to you that intimacy with your father that's not charged by external but is cultivated with you showing up for your relationship with God is your stand. The lamp is no use. Ah, you see, God has already called us the light. Uh, he doesn't need to, to, to make us the light anymore. We are already the light. It's, it's, it's the switching on of the light and placing it on the stand. I want to read it again. A lamp is placed on the stand where its light will shine. And, and, and many of us are here and, uh, and, 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 and we are present and we are the light, but we, we're not on the stand. We're not on the word. We're, we're not on the prayerful side. We're, we're not on the seeking the face of the Lord. So, so I want us to pray this morning that, Lord, uh, place me on my stand. Give me a vigor and a zeal for the things of God. Put me on my stand help me get into the word this is where we get our electricity or the charge or the match that sets us alight and watch this it says when the lamp is on the stand then both in Matthew and in Mark then the light shines then the solution comes then God's presence moves then we are commanders then the light shines for everyone. Let me read it again. Instead, put the lamp on its stand. And it gives light to everyone who's in the house. I don't know about you, but I believe that God is going to use us for our generation. I believe that with everything in my heart. But, but when I want to, so it's not going to be uh, self-help books that are going to make us revolutionaries for Jesus. It's, it's not going to be a, a daily a positive thinking that's going to put us there. It's not going to be cross my heart, hope to live forever. That's going to get us to this place. No, it, 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 we are already the light. So I want to speak to somebody who doesn't believe that God can use them. God designed you to be light. We just need to get on the stand. Shall we pray? Father, this morning, here we are. Woo! What a privilege to be made light and salt by you. What a privilege that you would think of us worthy to be light. Father, this morning we pray to be on the stand. That we don't want to be hidden under the bed. We don't want to be covered in a basket. We don't want to be in the room somewhere where no one can see. Lord God, we find ourselves in darkness. We find ourselves in a society, in a world that's falling apart. We find ourselves in trials and tribulations on a personal level that feels like it's drowning and consuming us. Father, we, we, we acknowledge the darkness that is around, but above acknowledging the darkness that's around us, we are so grateful that we are light. A city on a hill. Holy Spirit, help us get on the stand. Help us get on the stand. Help us get into the Word of God. Help us build an effectful prayer life. Help us seek your face daily. Help us to be renewed and transformed. Help us to study the word to show us our approved. Help us to seek your face. Help us to dwell in your presence. Help us to speak and utter the words like you want us to. Help us to be on the stand. Father, some of our stands are a bit tilted and we set them right this morning. Uh, some of us have been hidden and under the table and, and under the bed. And this morning, uh, we, we remember that we are the light of the earth. And, and so, the Bible says, are we. That if we, if we are on the stand and we're standing on your word, that others will see 
the goodness of our God and serve you. Help us get back on the stand. In Jesus' name we pray. Restoration. Get back in your place, baby. <laughs> Hop back on that stand. <laughs> get back into this world. You, you can't be a light underneath the bed. You, you can't be a light somewhere tucked away. Get back on your space. And oftentimes we use the scripture as a hype mechanism. I'm the light and the salt of the earth. When you, when you fully understand what being the light is, you understand that it has very little to do with the light, but everything to do with those around the light. So this is not a part of scripture that hypes us up, but it's a part of scripture that gives us a charge. That many are on that dark road and cannot see the light. Many don't know that there's a final destination. That's why they're taking their lives. Ooh, if only they just held on a little bit longer, they would see the city lights or a new town that, that, that's starting to shine and, and that would give them hope. See, the, Christ in us, the hope of glory. See, see, us being the light is not for us to shine and to be known and to be out there. It's so, it's directly connected to those around. It's a charge. It's a charge. And this morning, Lord God, we, we accept the charge. We're getting back on the stand, getting back in your word, getting back on the stand, getting back into a prayerful life, getting back on the stand, getting back to prayer and fasting, getting back on the stand, surrounding ourselves with your word, dwelling in your presence, getting back understand so we can shine a light so we can show and give hope in a world that's falling apart a lamp is placed on the stand where its light shines may we shine in Jesus name Makasa. May we shine in Jesus' name. The reason why I started with John 10.10, 10, that the devil kills, steals, and destroys. I was letting you know what the job description for the devil is. But if you look at Mark 4, 21 and, and Matthew 5 from about 13 all the way down to about 16, you actually realize our job description. So the devil is there to, to, to steal, to kill and destroy. And we are here to shine the light. Watch this. Still on Mark 21. If you go Mark 4, sorry. Still on Mark 4. If you go to verse 22. It says, for everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open. And every secret will be brought to light. Anyone with ears, let them hear and understand. So if the devil's mission is to kill, steal, and destroy, which if you really are honest, those things usually happen in, in, in dark spaces and dark corners. So if we play our role and, and our job description, Mark 4, 21, and, and Matthew 5, being the light and the salt of the earth, particularly light in this context of our conversation today, we expose... The devil's workings. Hope you hear me this morning. If he's there to steal, kill, and destroy the dark, if we do our job right, which is standing on the stand to shine, we expose the devil for his lies. We expose the devil for his deception. We expose the devil for, for his, uh, I don't even have an English word, we expose him.
What am I saying? Let's put the devil out of business. The more our light shines, the more the little maneuverings that he's doing, convincing people to, 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 to walk away from God, enticing them with things and, and, and you know allowing them to get into this deep depression that they want to take their lives the more we shine as the lamps that God has placed us to be we put him out of business get back on the stand let's move on I'm out of time, but I'm very tempted. I don't know who this is for. If you look at Mark 4, 22, this is, some, this is not a word for everybody. This is a specific word for someone. For everything that is hidden. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. For everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open. And every secret will be brought into light. I don't know who this is for. That there are things that the devil is maneuvering and, and, and orchestrating and it's happening at the back and you're just getting you can feel you can see you can sense that there's stuff that's been done and 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 right i don't know who this is for the holy spirit is saying for everything that is hidden will eventually be brought out to the open can we just pray over that right now just quickly father in the mighty name of jesus christ Anyone who's dealing, Lord God, with, with secrets and lies and orchestrations from the pits of hell that is trying to frustrate their lives and their livelihoods, livelihoods, livelihoods. Father God, we speak this word over this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That there is nothing that the devil has power or capacity to do over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we command for the secrets and the conniving and the orchestration that's taking place that is meant to destroy you to be brought to life right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right now. Those, 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 whatever. I don't know what the correct English term for it is, but whatever those plannings and, and, and dealings that are taking place that are trying to frame you, that are trying to corner you, that are trying to push you out of something. That's what the Holy Spirit, we pray this over it. Remember I said that the word of God is our vocab. What's our prayer? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that for everything that is hidden will eventually be brought to the open. Every secret, any dealings, any plan that is meant to destroy us, bring it to light in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. We've got 10 minutes. Let's do the last prayer point. Let's open our Bibles to Psalms 27. Psalms 27. We're looking at verse 14. Hmm. Mahai se tiri bakayaka. Lehemasa tararaba. Father, I pray over that person right now. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. Those plans will not prevail in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not prevail in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that you bring it to the forefront. Thank you, Lord God, that you don't only bring it and expose it, but you also give the capacity. I send destiny help us to surround this person, Lord God, that as the things are exposed, that they have the right set of network around them. Oh, that Father, that you orchestrate it. That Father, you will make it work together for their good in the mighty name of Jesus. I protect them with the blood of Jesus. They will not die. They will live in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sorry, I'm drinking a fizzy drink. I'm burping all over. Let's look at Psalm 27, verses 14. This one is very personal to me. This, this, this scripture uh, carried me through some of the most ridiculous times in my life. Let me 
It reads as follows. Psalm 27 verses 14. I would have lost heart. I would have lost heart if I had not believed. Woo! I would have lost heart if I had not believed. I, I would have lost my mind if I had not believed. I would have lost hope if I had not believed. I would have lost all will to live if I had not believed. I would have lost all faith if I had not believed. I would have lost the zeal to continue if I had not believed. I would have lost the zeal to continue if I had not believed. The direct result of not believing is losing your heart. It's hopelessness. It's discouragement. would have lost heart had I not believed. I don't know where you are in your life right now. Kavangatamuna knows lots of us, we are at different places in our lives. Some of us are looking at the scripture and, and, and we're saying, shoo, we can look back and go, Lord, if I did not hold on and if I did not believe you and what you said, yo, I would have made some serious mistakes, or I would have never survived this, or I would have never, that's, that's some of us. Some of us are reading the scripture this morning, it's like, if I had not believed, I would have lost, or rather, I would have lost heart if I had not believed. And this scripture then today acts as an encouragement and an invitation to believe. So, so you can find yourself on either side of the spectrum. Believe this God. Receive this God. Take him at his word. Be because honestly, genuinely, I think I said it just a few minutes ago, Christ in us the hope of glory. See, if we didn't know that there's eternal life, the struggles of this life can consume us so much. If, if, if we don't know how the story ends, we can live our entire lives in distress because we didn't believe that the story ends well for us. If, 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 we, if we don't believe that healing comes from God, we can lose heart. If, if, if we don't believe that provision comes from God, when you don't have a job, it can be very easy to lose heart. If, if we don't believe that, 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 that he is the one that makes us great, not, not how many followers uh, we have, that, 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 that he speaks to Abraham and says, I will make your name great. If we believe that God will make us great, maybe, maybe we won't run around looking from, for validation from, from every Tom, Dick, and Harry that we come across. If, if we believe that he's our source, uh, maybe, maybe uh, we won't hop from one, you know, chakra to this, to that, to try to get the solution to be one. If we believe that greater is he that in, is in us than, than he that is in the world, maybe we, we will look at the trials and tribulations we face with a different, do we believe?
Maybe if we believe that what God has joined together, no man can put asunder. It's a covenant. Woo! Speaking over marriages this morning. Maybe if we believed that no one can put asunder what God has put together, we may not lose heart in our marriage. Maybe if, if, if we believe the word when God says, train up your children in the ways of God. We, we would not lose heart if it seems like they're going off the track. Maybe if we believed that the riches and the glory belongs to him. We, we wouldn't stress and be filled with anxiety because uh, 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 you, you still haven't gotten that SMS from that invoice or that paycheck or that person who said they're going to. Maybe if we believed that he, he adds wealth without toil. We, we wouldn't sacrifice ourselves and, 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 and compromise on who we are and our moral fiber and what God has called us to be and compromise on our salvation because we know that he adds wealth if we believed him. We may not lose hope or lose heart got three minutes Holy Spirit help us believe help us take God at his word see when you believe God It becomes very difficult for the devil to present any other thing that's going to shift you from the conviction you received from God. I want to believe you, God. I want to believe your promises. I want to believe that you're with me every step of the way. I want to believe. I want to not just believe it because I'm hearing it and it sounds great, but, but I want to believe it from the core. I, I don't want to be shifted from this place because, because life will throw things at us. You, Jesus in John 17 says, I was persecuted, you will be persecuted. You know, sometimes as Christians, we, we want to kick and scream when things don't go our way because, because we don't believe the word. You didn't believe Jesus when he said, I was persecuted, what more you? It will come. It was going to happen. Life will happen. But the difference here is that with God, we don't lose heart. We don't lose heart. Watch this, because even when we're driving in the car, and it's a long distance drive and you've fallen asleep a couple of times and woken up and only to see the darkness and you go back to sleep again and you wake up to see the darkness, see, see, see. We don't lose heart. There's a city on the hill. The minute you gaze your eyes on that city, if you're a passenger, you're hoping a garage is coming up so you guys can have a pee break or you can get a, a Red Bull or you know, something to eat or get to stretch your legs. But, but there's hope. Lord, our prayer this morning is Psalm 27, 14. I would have lost my mind. I would have lost my mind. I would have, I would have lost my mind. Thank you for keeping my mind in perfect peace. Ooh, I would have lost my temper. I would have, I would have lost character. I would have, I would have lost money. I would have lost. Listen, listen. Had, had I not had a little bit of faith of a mustard seed that I was holding on to, I would have, I would have lost heart. And, and I want to encourage you this morning to believe. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Believe. That every need he covers, believe. That you're the apple of his eye, believe. That God is madly in love with you, believe. That he has a great future and a hope for you, believe. 
that he knew you even before you were born, predestined a life for you. Believe that the story ends well. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Woo! Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for fellowship. Thank you for each and every person who's here with us this morning. Thank you that we can come together like this. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being so readily available for us. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we have a charge this morning and it's to get back on the stand and, and shine our light to be silent, to live our lives boldly for you, with you. Holy Spirit, help us. God, have mercy on us. Be generous to us and gracious to us. Forgive us. Where unbelief has creeped in, Lord God, we want to believe. For every heart that is discouraged, Lord God, we speak a peace over it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. Your peace. Your peace that surpasses all understanding. Your peace that reigns forever and ever. Your peace that hovers over our lives. Your peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are at the brink of losing heart, Lord God, we speak your peace. Yeah. One more minute. I know we're over time. Just stay there for a bit. Your peace. Your peace. Your peace. Your peace. Your peace. Let your peace reign in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your peace. Those whose minds are not at rest, your peace. Those who struggle with sleep and resting, your peace. Those who are in a wrestle with making a decision that's big in their lives right now, your peace. Those who are anxious for the time to come, your peace. 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 We speak your peace this morning. Hallelujah. Prince of peace. Hey. Your peace, your peace. Your peace. Your peace. In their marriages, your peace. In their workspaces, your peace. Woo! Your peace, let it rain, Lord. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Come on, 20 more minutes, just push a little bit. Look. 20 more seconds, not minutes. <laughs> your peace, speak peace over yourself. Speak peace over your mind. Speak peace over your children, over your family, your spouse, your friends, your peace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your peace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You've got 10 seconds. Let's go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your peace. And the relationship, your peace. Oh, in the business idea and business partnerships, your peace. Masha in their bodies, Lord God, where sickness is trying to rule your peace. Let it rain on us this morning in the 
mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, 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 shase tikiba, hallelujah, man dehe mase tikiba, hallelujah, 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 your peace. Sure. you that even when we log off you continue praying if you've got another 10 minutes if you've got another 15 minutes stay stay here stay in this atmosphere we love you we pray for you we can't wait to see you tomorrow at constitutional hill continue to pray with us let's trust god for a move what's the mission the mission is to present jesus undiluted create a space for us to come and exalt his name to give him praise with our lives to exalt him to look at his word and hear what he has to say for us we're going and coming for him you know with jesus this jesus that we say one thing no hype no lineup just jesus and you know what that's enough you don't need anything else so we can't wait to see you tomorrow it's going to be great. If you're not there and you maybe live in another province or you didn't get a ticket, please still pray with us. The family here stand in agreement with us for God to move. We're praying for salvation. We're praying for healing. We're praying for open doors. But more than anything, we're praying for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit for him to do that which he needs to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, we will go live on some of the moments. Don't worry if you're not there. We'll try to cover as much for you. But we'll see you tomorrow at constitutional view. We love you. Continue to declare Jesus. See you soon.